So today I'm going to um, review some stocks for technical analysis because technical analysis is a lot about practice. It's about constant monitoring and observation of your stocks. It's sort of like getting to know a person. So if there's a person you're very close with, maybe a friend at school, and then you spend a lot of time with them and I say to you, where is this person most likely to be right now? And you say, oh, they're in the math class or they're in the dorm room or because you have a pretty good idea because you know their patterns. It may turn out that they didn't actually go to the math class today and you're wrong. But chances are you're right. You know the pattern, the direction of where they're going on a day-to-day -day basis. Much better than someone that just met them for the first day. So if I meet a stock for the first day today, I really don't know where they're, they're going to be tomorrow or where they're going to be two hours from now. I just I don't know the patterns yet. So the technical analysis is a lot about monitoring, observing, and getting to know the patterns of stocks. Because like people, they make a lot of the same repetitive moves. And that's a good basis for what technical analysis is about, is understanding uh, the patterns or the predictability of a particular stock or stock market. So you could utilize that to make uh, better investments in the future. But again, uh, it takes time. But luckily for us, there's a record of the past movements of the stock. Just like if you had a person that you knew and they were on, somehow you had that, that Apple app where it can track every place they go. And then you could review for a past month everything they did every day. You could probably come up with a pretty predictable schedule of what they're going to do in the future. Uh, although something could change. Sem the school semester could end and then the summer starts. Completely do new pattern. And that happens with stocks all the time. Their current predictable um, trading patterns ab abruptly stop and the new patterns begin to emerge. Something significant has changed. They've been purchased or they bought a new company or they went into a new line of business. Things like that or a new competitor has emerged. Things like that can significantly change the course of action for a lot of stocks. Or the general stock market in total has changed and that's going to affect your individual stock. So let's look at a couple of stocks here and I'll give you a cursory glance of some technical analysis. So the, the, um, the first stock here is Dollar General that we're going to look at. And Dollar General is at $75, almost $76. And it's uh, a store that has been riding the demographic changes over the past 10 years. So in the past 10 years, dollar or low cost stores have become popular as the American middle class has been dwindling and its purchasing power has been evaporating and they've been looking to stretch their money as far as possible. And as poverty has increased, these dollar stores have become more attractive because you can um, spend less there than at traditional stores. An interesting thing about these stocks as well, they are um, sort of defensive or counter-cyclical. When there's a recession, they do better. Makes sense, right? There's a recession, people can't, they're not going to spend on the luxury items or the more expensive stores and they start trading down to the um, dollar stores. Same thing happens in the restaurant world. Some of the more expensive restaurants or higher end restaurants suffer business and then lower cost restaurants pick up a little bit business in, in a recession. So that's one interesting thing. So the first thing I would do, uh, technically speaking, the first step is I'm going to go to key statistics. Will be my first step on this technical stock. And here I can pick up a couple of key technical indicators. So over here, although not strictly a technical indicator, I'm going to look at the beta. And I'm going to see here that a beta of 1 is a fairly stable stock. Because beta of 1 matches. So I'm just getting an idea of the, of the um, volatility of the stock. And here, with a beta of 1, the stock is not that volatile. Matches the market. It had a nice 52-week change of a 37% increase. Um, 
compared to a 12% increase in the S&P 500. So not a bad stock to have been invested in over the past year. The 52-week high and low, we have a 76 to 53, and it's currently at uh, close to 76. So technically, the, the stock is trading in a strong cycle or a momentum cycle. So it's at the top end of its high. So technically, that's a good sign because it's showing that the stock has um, some strength in the stock price and is likely to continue going up. Okay. So let's see. Now, you could also look at this held by insiders, held by institutions. This is not so much a technical indicator, but it's another good indicator as far as analyzing stocks. The percentage held by institutions, if it's above 90%, all the mutual fund managers know about the stock and own it. So that doesn't mean there's not, there's not good future potential. It just means that if you were in the stock when only 20% of its shares were held by institutions or 50% of its shares were held by institutions, technically that would be a good time. You want to be invested in the stock when the percentage held by institutions is between, say, 25 to 60%. Because not everybody, not every future mutual fund manager has purchased it yet. So this means there's a lot of growth. If your stock is one that mutual fund managers are starting to discover and starting to invest in, there's a lot of future demand from these mutual fund managers in these shares. Right now, Dollar General has been discovered and been purchased so aggressively that 93% of its shares are held by institutions, which means mutual fund managers and pension funds and things of that nature. So it's already been discovered and fully invested in. So technically, I would say that you know, this particular piece of upside or growth potential is already fully uh, invested. So there's not much potential there. It doesn't mean don't buy the stock. It just means to me as an investor, I, I would realize that the upside of the stock is going to be a little slower because all the mutual funds and institutions have already put their money into it. OK. So another important thing, this is now, now for a technical indicator, a very important technical indicator that all of your stock analysis reports should list is the short percentage of float. And here, the short percentage of float is 1.2%, a very low short percentage of float. That means that nobody is betting against the stock. Most everybody agrees the stock's going to continue to go up, and that's a very low short percentage. So technically, I would say, that's a strong indicator that most advanced traders feel that this stock is going to continue to rise. No one is betting. Very few people are taking a short position against it. All right. I'm just looking over to see if there's anything. Now, going back up here for a minute, uh, the 50-day and 200-day moving average, those are just indicators, but we have to go to a chart to really explore them. So we're going to do that next. We're going to go over to a chart. Let's see. Right. So I'm going to go up to interactive charts and I'm going to build my technical analysis landscape so what I want to look at is a one-year chart to give me some history. I'm going to add some indicators. So the first indicator I'm going to add is uh, a 50-day moving average. Oh, wait. I already had that.
I'm going to work with a 50 and a 100 day moving average. So the 100 is green and the 50 is red. Okay, now, right here in the present day, we have the stock price, the 50-day and the 100-day moving average lined up. This is a go sign. This is green for go, keep buying the stock, it's going to continue to rise. Whenever the stock price is above the 50-day and the 50-day is above the 100-day, those are indicators that the stock price is going to continue to move up. And you can see where that kind of first sets itself up here is the first point in recent history in the past couple of weeks that we have stock price 50 day 100 day moving average lined up in that in that order and you can see how the stock price has moved up since that originally occurred so that would be um, the clearest point of it's okay to buy the stock and it's generally a good point to buy when it first develops like back here in August of 2014, wow, this is, I wanted to, I got a five year chart. I really wanted a one year, so I'm gonna switch that to one year. I was wondering why it was so, all right. Okay, so now you can have a situation where, let's go back here first. All right, so we'll go all the way back. Here is where it kind of first spikes up. So you see this spike here? So technically, we have um, one head, two head, three heads. Remember the head and shoulders? Those are the three heads on this chart in the formation. And they say technically when you see three heads on the next sort of dip, you should buy because it's going to go up even higher. It's going to break through and continue higher. So if you see, and this is sort of, you can see this in the book called the, the head and shoulders, and you see here's one head, well here's the shoulder, here's the head, and another shoulder are basically three peaks in a year. The third, after the third time, you should buy into the next uh, dip because the fourth peak is going to be the highest. And you can see that's sort of what's happening here. Uh, but also, this must have been some sort of earnings or some sort of information was released here because I could see the volume. It's really faint down here, but you see this volume line? See how the volume spiked here and the stock spike? That means it must have most likely was some sort of positive news or a good earnings release. Now, technically, um, when you see such strong volume and, and such a huge movement in one day, Technically, that's not that, that uh, significant because if there's like a huge burst in one day, generally there's a recovery period where the stock is going to move lower. And that sort of happened here. But you can see how now when the stock first, the stock is trading up here, when it first went over, passed through the 50-day moving average, that's a sell sign. Whenever the stock price penetrates the 50-day moving average, that's the sell sign. And then when it goes below the 100-day moving average, like we have down here by the hand, the green line, and went again down the below the 100-day moving average, that's the second sell sign. So you should have sold out. I generally like to sell out on the 50, uh, but I might wait to the 100 if it's very close. Now, it didn't take long before the stock to go back. Only took uh, over here in October 10th is when it went below the the 100 day, and then by October 20th, it went back above the 100 day. So that's a buy sign. If the stock can penetrate and go above the 100 day, the 100 day becomes its new resistance at the top. So it penetrated the 100 day resistance, and then it penetrated the next resistance at the 50 day. So if you see, if you see here, the stock went above the 100 day, and a few days later, it went above the 50. Two buy signs so close together is screaming at me to buy the stock. When I see two technical buy indicators like this, piercing the 50-day and the 100-day together so close, those are two very strong buy signs. And then it sets up, of course, we set up the stock price, 50-day, 100-day. Another clear sign to buy the stock. And look what happens. We have a nice run from $60 a share up to $70 a share. 
that's a pretty significant increase in stock price. Now we get into position where it's playing with its support on the 50 day. So here, this would lead to a lot of trading because you would sell, you could sell here at the 50 day, buy again when it goes above the 50 day, sell when it touches the 50. Uh, now the 50 becomes a support, uh, a resistance. So you see here, it can't break above the 50 day moving average anymore. So we're not buying it because it's not breaking above the 50 day. So sure, it did a false start over here when it broke above the 50, went sort of high and came back down under the 50. So at that point, you sort of broke even. And now you're waiting to this day when the stock finally breaks above the 50 day moving average again. And that's another buy in point because at this point, when it's below the 50, we don't know if it's going for the 100. So we're selling and waiting to see if it goes down for the 100 or back above the 50. And again, here it went above the 50 and set up the stock price, that technical buy indicator, stock price, 50 day, 100 day. And again, we moved from a stock price of 68 to about uh, 75, 76 that we are today. And right now, technically, even though you, you probably miss most of the technical upside on these indicators, it's still showing that the stock price should keep improving. However, uh, this particular pattern, if it ever, if it goes and touches the 50, I'm okay if it touches the 50 and bounces off of it, that is showing uh, su uh, support at the 50 day moving average. But if it penetrates below the 50, then that would be a sell. But right now the stock is looking like a buy. So right here, Yahoo makes a nice little thing here where I could flip to another symbol and not have to reset the chart up. So I have, um, let me go to Yahoo. It's always weird looking at Yahoo stock on Yahoo's finance page, but. Okay. All right, so here on Yahoo, we see that Right here, we have that situation where the 50 day is going above the 100 day. And so and it's finally, we have a lot of testing of the support and the resistance back here. And finally, over here, the stock price went above, for the first time in a while, went above the 50, 100, and stock price is above both moving averages. So that would be a pretty significant buy sign right there. But then when you have the 50 day move over move and penetrate the 100 day, that's a really big technical buy sign. So we have three really big buy signs and the stock moves from 35 up to 50 or actually 51 sort of at a high. Now you did sort of have a, a situation here where it, it tests the support and if you were a cautious trader, you could kind of sell when it went below the 50 day to see what happens and buy again when it goes above the 50 day. So you could have cautiously sort of, if you're more active a trader, just took a pause, took your profits, sold out, see what's going to happen, because it could be heading for the 100 day. You don't know. You want to protect yourself. But since it turned right around and went back up above the 50 day, you would want to buy back in. And then we could see this is a, you know, from 40 to $50, a pretty big movement. But now here we have it going below the 50 day again. So it, technically you would want to sell and see if it's gonna, gonna test that support. And what happens is that over here, it really can't penetrate the 50 day for much time, maybe for a few hours during the day. And then we have a testing of the support and resistance a couple of times before it finally breaks through the 100 day support. So that's very negative. And then on top of that, the 50 day crosses over the 100 day. So here is, a technical indicator saying don't buy this stock, the stock price is going to continue to go down. Uh, so technically, um, although we're seeing a little bit more life here, it's breaking above the 50, but then going below it again. So technically the stock is in bad shape as far as where the stock price is likely to be in two or three months. They'll probably be down another five to 10%. The technicals are not good with, um, with Yahoo. Let's Okay, so if you look at the, the key statistics on Yahoo, you see that C 
61% are held by institutions because they probably witnessed the technical situation and have sold out already. Although that could be a positive if things turn around for the stock, the fact that a low percentage of its shares are held by institutions would mean that it could have significant growth on the other side. So and the short, the short, the short ratio, the short position of float is, uh, is very small too. So it looks like most traders are not betting that the stocks can go down much, much more, but a lot of institutions have moved on and put their money into other stocks. So this could be a good situation for Yahoo. If Yahoo sort of turns around uh, and can be, show some growth, has a, good, it has a good setup where a lot of, if it could reverse its chart pattern, show some growth, a lot of technical indicators, were, in, uh, investors will move back in and potentially a lot of institutions because the institution ratio is a little low for them. All right, so let's move on to um, the next stock. Okay, so we see um, a lot of activity in the past year in the stock. So we see that over here, the 50-day penetrates the 100-day in the stock price. Um, has been in this testing pattern for a while, where it's sort of playing with the resistance and the support of the 50 and 100-day moving average. Uh, so this would be a, a, a time or an area where the, I wouldn't be so interested in buying the stock until it got to about here. So here we have, again, that scenario where the stock price is finally above both moving averages, and then the 50-day crosses over the 100-day. And so right here, if you bought, if you purchased the stock here at 223, when it went over the 50 and 100-day, you had a nice run up to 320. But even if you waited till the third technical indicator, the 50 going over the 100, you still could have got in at two, uh, 265 and ran it up to, you know, possibly up to 320. But here is the problem. The stock makes a dip below the 50 and then below the 100 and then the 100 crosses over the 50. So again, technically, tech, the technicians would say that the stock is in a downward pattern. that um, I, would not buy the, I would not feel comfortable buying the stock at this pos particular position. If we look at, let's just give an idea of the key statistics. All right, so on the key statistics, we have 17% uh, of the shares are sold short and 83% are owned by institutions. So the institutions are invested pretty heavily, but a 17% uh, short percentage of float is an aggressive short position on the stock. So the more advanced investors are betting that price is going to go down even lower. So if you have this stock as a buy stock and you're writing a buy uh, analysis on the stock, you could still go with a buy uh, recommendation with all your fundamental uh, work, but you would, in the technical section, you would put a warning saying that the technicals on this stock look weak, that the short, percentage, the short position is rather high and the stock is trading below its 50 and 100 day moving indicators. Uh, and then you would say that, you know, technically you would want to wait to purchase this, this stock once it reverses this pattern it would be setting the stock up for another, probably another good growth cycle in the stock price. So, um, so you could put in sort of like a technical warning or just a technical update. Uh, you could still maintain a buy position on the stock, but you would want to kind of warn about the technicals or show at least that you looked at the technical side and the technicals are weak. So um, even though the stock is in a good financial position, technically may not be the perfect time to purchase right now. So you could sort of put like a warning on it. Uh, I wouldn't say to scrap your whole analysis if you already started it on this stock. Um, uh, 
but the technicals. And that's, that's one thing that's frustrating and why a lot of times the worlds don't really come together well or people don't like to use both fundamental and technical because oftentimes they can disagree sharply. The fundamentals could say you should buy the stock and the technicals could say you should sell. And sometimes more, more commonly the fundamentals say sell while the technicals say buy. Uh, now, in most of the work that I've done, most of the experiences that I've had, and most of the um, research I've read on, the, on this, is that the technicals usually win out over the fundamentals. And the technical, the stock usually moves in the technical direction. But um, that's something for you to discover and see if that holds true in your investing life, if that continues to be true. All right, so let's look at um, another stock. We'll go to um, LB. So we could see uh, back here, we had um, this, this area here is sort of testing. You see where it's bouncing between the 150 day and a very, ter a very tight scale. It's bouncing between the 50 day and 100 day. And it's just testing. That's sort of like I said, there are some traders who will trade as soon as it touches the 100, they'll purchase, touches the 50, they'll sell, back down to the 100, they'll They'll purchase and they just kind of ride that vol volatility. They can, they're sort of generating a lot of profit or a lot of money. And eventually when the stock price penetrates above the 50-day, like we see back here in August, we have the stock price above the 50-day, above the 100. Now all that money that I made grinding the stock in, the, in the, the period where it's testing its support and resistance, I could put that all back into the stock and we move from a $58 all the way back up to $85 before again test is, tests the support. Now, once the stock, once the stock is above the 50 day, the 50 day becomes its support. And we can see here that it sort of tested or broke through its support temporarily on, on a particular day. But the important thing here is we'd call this a bounce. It's bouncing off the 50 day, which is technically strong because what, what happens is this could just be a bad day in the market. Some bad news came out, all stocks went down. But this stock, people rushed back in to buy. And that means that there are a number of stocks that people just know fundamentally are a great stock to own and they're waiting for a technical sign to buy back in. And if it's gonna to touch the support, that's sort of a low price of the range, you're gonna buy back in. And we're seeing that people bought back in and the stock bounced up even higher to 93. Now here, it looks like the stock might be entering another grinding phase where it's going to go between the 50 and 100 day and right now it's sort of just testing the now in this pad the grinding pattern the 50 becomes its resistance and the 100 becomes its support so the stock might be entering entering in a new grinding phase where it's going to bounce between the 50 and 100 so here a technical trader would be you know selling it to 50 buying back closer to the 100 but here it didn't actually touch, came too close to touching the 100. And oftentimes in the grinding pattern, it may not actually touch or penetrate the 100. So you can do what sometimes I refer to as a half a grind. And you, you, you sell it at the 50. And when it gets halfway between 50 and 100, you buy it back. So and you can see in the previous grinding pattern, it only touched the 100 a couple of times. Now, if it actually touches the 100 and bounces off, you continue to own it. But on the uh, half a grind, you buy it when it um, is between 50 and 100, then you buy it again when it touches 100. However, if it goes below the 100, you want to sell. If it bounces back up, you just wait for it to keep moving up, and the grind will continue. And that way, you can make a lot of money on the grinding pattern before it breaks out the next breakout. So if the next breakout is upward, you want to put all that money back into the stock and ride the stock higher. If the breakout is lower, you want to sell your stock in it and wait to see how low it goes before the technical indicators come back to buy it. So you see that there's a lot of trading involved with technical analysis. It's, it's more of an occupation and uh, more of a short term, can be more of an intra-year strategy than uh, a long-term multi-year strategy. That's a re another reason a lot of investors don't like it. It's a lot of work. 
and it's a lot of observation, it's a lot of you know, uh, monitoring. So it's a lot easier just to buy the stock and hold it forever. And that strategy has proven to work even better. And then um, we have a chapter coming up where we talk about stock buying strategies. And the long term, you buy and you hold the stock forever, generally works out a lot, uh, a lot more lucratively than a lot of this technical trading. OK. So right now, this stock is uh, sort of in entering another grind phase. So it's not a clear buy in the technicals, but it's not a sell in the technicals either. It's sort of a neutral. And we see um, that there's a very small percentage of the stock is sold short, and 71 only 71 percent of institutions own it. So there is still a, there's still a very positive note to buying the stock because the short position um, is not is very small, and the amount of institutions owning it is still is lower than average. Average is usually around, for most popular stocks, around 80, 90 percent. So this stock is, has a lot of potential. Okay. So I'm going to go to the next stock, which is a Wynn Hotel, I think. Win Resorts. What's generating? Okay, we see that 76% of investors in, are in Win and it has 8.6% short percentage of float. Now, what's also significant about the short percentage of float is I'm working on the averages for the market. However, it would be a lot more interesting to know um, each stock has its own average short percentage that, it's gonna, that it has in any particular day. So you really want to work for that point. So if 10% was average for win and it's now at 8% and it's, it's moving from 10 to 8, that would be a, more that would be a technically stronger position because the shorts are, are diminishing. So a lot of times the short percentage of float, you'd like to see more of a history of it, not just one day. Because you want to know, because each stock has its own temperature when it comes to the short percentage of float. So you want to know, is it uh, gradually moving higher from that average or lower, back towards the average or below the average? And that is really helps to tell technically whether to buy or sell the stock. Because you, you want to go with the short people. So the people are shorting the stock, and that's increasing the pool of short sell is increasing, you want to sell the stock. And if the short percentage of floats decreasing and more people are reversing their short positions, you want to own that stock because it's creating extra demand. Okay. So, um, all right. so here we have a stock that um, Had, had some trouble, and we'd say that all right. back, um, back in, say, the last summer, we see the 50-day going penetrating the 100-day and stock price sort of below. But we had this set up here, and it looked like things were going to change. The stock price back here behind this chart here. Um, you can kind of see behind this chart here that it looked like the stock price was going above. It definitely did go above the 100 and the 50-day moving average. However, that looked very promising, but then it sunk right back below both stock indexes, moving averages. Um, so technically, just the fact that the red line crossing the green line, penetrating below the green line, the 50-day penetrating the 100-day, would be a big sell, technical sell. Uh, although we've had um, some false hopes here that really haven't turned around. So most generally, in a lot of times I see a chart like this, I won't buy the stock until the 50-day has gone above the 100-day again. 
because you can see that there's been a real downward trend uh, in this stock from you know, around $200 per share down to about $128 per share at the end here. So if we're looking back down here, we have the, you know, what we don't want to see, the 100 to 50 in the stock price. So that would say that this stock can continue to move lower, technically. There's, there's no sign of it going to increase. Um, and uh, so I would, for a stock like this, I would watch that short percentage of float. If that continues to increase, I would hold off on buying it. But if I saw a significant change in the short percentage of float moving lower and hopefully coinciding with the stock price moving above the 50-day moving average, then that technically would be a time to buy back into the stock. Uh, let's move to Toyota. So here we have some good news on this stock. We had the, um, after a distressing period here, looked like a good start here, but then the stock, the 50 day crossed over the 100. Um, stock price continued to go down. And then we see some life. The stock price goes above the 50, then the stock price goes above the 100, and then the 50 crosses over the 100. So right here, back in December was a very strong buy, three buy signals to buy Toyota. And ever since, the stock has continued to move higher. And it's still in this buy position, where we have the stock price above the 50-day and the 50-day above the 100. So Toyota is a very clear, technically, buy stock. So if you have a team that has um, Toyota, It'd be nice to write up a, a technical um, analysis piece for your stock because the, tech, the, tech, the technicals look good and continuing to own or buy the stock. And if we look at here, we see that there's only three, it's only a million shares sold short, less than 1%. So the short position is, is almost non-existent, meaning that no one is really betting against this stock. Now, there's another technical indicator down here that I haven't talked about too much, um, where I'll, I'll talk about now. It's called the RSI. So it's a relative strength, relative strength indicator. And this is another technical chart that you could look at and what this shows you is it's looking at the strength in the purchases versus the strength in the sales. So when, when the stock is being purchased very strongly, and you'll see these, um, like right here, it's almost off the chart, which is, let's go over a little bit. Um, the chart runs from, I guess, 80 to 20. But 70 to 30 is sort of um, a range that we like to look at. I mean, the chart can go from uh, 0 to 100. But typically, um, 80 is really very high and 20 is very low. So what a lot of traders do is they like to, when the stock reaches uh, a top level like 80 or uh, above 70 or between 70 and 80, that's technically overpurchased. The stock has been under heavy, heavy purchasing of its shares, and that's usually a peak of the stock price. And you can see up above, see how the stock price has peaked. Um, and whenever it reaches 80, statistically, technically, it's going to start going the other direction. It's been too overpurchased. And then when it touches uh, the bottom, gets close to 20, like right here is a good bottom point, when it touches, actually touches the 20, technically it's a very strong time to buy. So if you watch this chart every day, there may only be um, 
one or two opportunities during the year when it hits 20, 80 or 20. Typically, when it hits 80, you should sell. When it hits 20, you should purchase. Because, because of here, when it hit 20, there was uh, an incredible amount of being oversold. So it just makes a relationship looking at the, the, the amount of purchasing to the amount of sales on the stock to create sort of a, um, a scale of how aggressive the stock is being purchased versus how aggressive the stock is being sold. And you can kind of see that in the volume of the red and green bars above. You see how we had a lot of green bars in this period? Right, in this period we had a lot of up volume purchasing on and the stock moving higher and it pushed it back up to this very high peak. So here what they would say would be a good, a good point to sell. Although it never reached that 20 side on the other side again. But even though if you did sell here, um, if you follow a chart like this, you may say for Toyota, it's good to sell when it, when it hits, uh, uh, when it goes over 70 and then buy back in when it touches 50 on this particular chart because it seems to do a lot of um, going to 50 to 70. So RSI is just another uh, technical indicator that you could use. And the rule basically is if it touches 80, you should sell. If it touches 20, you should purchase. Because it, it, just, it just shows you when things have been overdone. Things have been overly purchased or overly sold. So it, tip, it typically tends to reverse that position. All right. So let's go to Best Buy is the next stock we're going to look at. Right. Okay. So interesting chart here. Um, here we had back here we had the 100 day go below the 50, I'm sorry, the 50 day go below, above the 100 day. So this would have been the point to buy into the stock. And you can see generally whenever you see this chart formation, uh, the stock price going above the 50 and 100 and the 50 day crossing over the, the 100 day, you always see an upward trajectory. See how the stock, this, the rest of this chart for the rest of the year is moving higher, even though there's highs and lows, but, but overall the long term trend for the year is higher. And this is why for a lot of, this is why, I mean, you may be watching a stock for six months or a year before it, this pattern happens. And when this pattern happens so close together, stock price goes above the 50 and the 100 and the 50 crosses over the 100. A lot of people who don't know technical analysis or just look at the stock would say, oh, the stock just moved from, the stock just moved from, uh, $26 to $29, it's getting expensive, I don't want to buy because it's moved up already a lot. However, if you're a technician and you're looking and you see that it's cr the 50 crosses over the 100, that's a really strong time to buy in because we have three buy signals already. Crossing over the 50, crossing over the 100, and then the 50 day moving average crossing over the 100 day moving average. And then not much longer we're moving from you know, 29 to $41 a share. Although we had some periods here where it tested the support of the 50 and then the 100. Uh, and that, that's why I say a lot of people will sell when it tests the 50 and buy back in when it, it goes test the 100. And you could have done very well doing that there. And again, you could have done it again here, sold it when it passed the 50, and then purchased it again when it's above the 100. And now it looks like it's doing it a third time. So here, though, is a difference. We see that it's not just testing the 100, it's really having a breakout below the 100. So again, this stock, you would wait for that stock price to go above the 100 day moving average before you purchase again. So technically, this stock is also looking uh, weak. And we see that 77% of institutions own it. And, which is down from a higher percentage. No one had a higher percentage earlier. So um, some institutions are pulling back on it. And the short percentage of float is 10%, which for Best Buy um, is, is, I think, a little bit higher than usual. 
but not bad for this particular industry. I'm not familiar with this what this company does. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to manipulate. Okay, so let's see here. We had a good signal here. This would be a bad signal here where the 50 day went over the 100 and the stock price um, didn't do so well. And then finally, we had the go ahead here where we had the stock price, the 50 day, and the 100 day line up in the perfect alignment. And the stock had a very nice run until we ran into tr trouble here. It's penetrating the 50 and the 100 day, uh, and now the 50 day is crossed over the 100 day. So this stock also, sorry to say, technically is in a sell area. We're going to have more downward movement in the stock price. And again, you don't have to change the stock. You can keep it your and the stock you're analyzing, but you just may want to put in the risk section or a technical analysis section a couple of sentences saying that even though we feel the stock fundamentally is a very strong buy, it has good fundamentals, um, it should be noted that the technicals are looking weak. And you can say because the, the stock is trading below its 50 and 100 day moving average. That's all you have to say in one sentence like that. Um, just acknowledge, because most investors may say, <coughs> most investors who read anal analyst reports, they don't know anything about technical analysis. So that's why a lot of these reports don't have any mention of it. Um, they're just not familiar. So even if you say, they won't even understand when you, you, you describe the technicals, but I changed this. No. It'd still be nice to, um, for me to see that. All right. Okay, so 102% held by institutions. I'm not sure exactly how that's possible, but um, in a short ratio of 12, well, it's not the short percentage. Actually, the is 8 million shares sold short of, so they didn't calculate the percentage, but it's actually kind of high. If you divide 8 by 4 mil 41 million, actually short's 40, yeah, 41 million. I'm just going to calculate that. Sometimes if they don't have the percentage here, you could just take um, the short sell, the share sold short right here, we have 8 million, and I'm going to divide by the float, which is about 41 million, and so it's about 20% of these shares are sold short. So if they don't calculate it, you could calculate that yourself. And you can see that actually, oh, I didn't notice this. The prior month, the sales sh sold short were uh, uh, 7.99. So that's actually a good, good thing to look at. The, the short position is going higher here from the previous month. So this stock is looking a little negative here. And let's try the, the comp team seven. Boeing. We'll start with the technicals on Boeing. And we see that. Okay. Um, only 9.9% .9 held by institutions, which seems very low. <laughs> if that's true, it's a good, a very te good technical indicator that that could possibly could be a good buy-in point. And we have 
15 uh, million shares sold short, which is only 2.7%. Now, this has grown from the prior month, about 15 million shares sold short to 15.5 million shares sold short. That's a very small increase, a very slow increase. So I wouldn't really be so worried about it because the short percentage is very low. And it looks like a lot of, many institutions have not, are not invested in this. So there could be a good growth potential for Boeing. <coughs> so I look at the technical side here. Uh, and again, we have, you know, interestingly enough, this is the 50-day 100 in stock price looking like a good position here. However, it wasn't a good indicator of where the stock was going because the stock didn't move lower. It had a bad period here until again, this point, the 50-day corrects over the 100 and we have the stock price position, but then it goes right below it again. And then finally switch. So here, be a pretty active stock because you'll be buying here, selling here, buying again, and then finally, we have the run-up that we've been waiting for. <coughs> and currently, it's testing the 50-day support. So this stock, uh, technically, you'd want to uh, follow the stock a little bit more closely. If it can turn around from this period and go back above the 50-day moving average, then everything would be keep buying the stock. If it keeps heading towards the 100-day moving average, then that would be an increasingly increasing alarm bell to sell the stock. So again, the technical, this would be the best technical area to buy into it back here. Uh, back here, and you have a run up from 126 <coughs> to about 150. And now we're getting a little bit more testing of support. So again, this, I would look at the RSI indicator, and I would see that this was sort of the, um, we can see here, this is sort of the peak period here, and it's heading back down. I would wait until maybe it gets closer to 20. So in a, um, in a couple of days, the stock may, or a couple of weeks, it may sort of head closer to the 100-day moving average in the lower RSI. And as soon as that upticks away from the 100-day moving average and I see the RSI improving, technically that would be a good point to buy in. But I'm gonna, I would have to follow the stock every couple of days to see where things are, are moving or trending. Now there's one other thing that, <clears throat> another indicator I'm just gonna talk about briefly that you could look at, and that could be the Bollinger Bands. So I'm gonna put up these Bollinger Bands, and what these are, are is using statistics or standard deviation. So we could calculate standard deviations, and I, I'm not sure if this is one or two standard deviations, but um, we can see when statistically, whatever it touches the top end of the Bollinger Band, that's sort of the high end of it's touching its probability. <coughs> um, you take the standard deviation, you add it to the average, and then and you subtract it from the average, and that becomes the band. So the top end is adding the the the, the average to the the um, adding the standard deviation to the average, and the bottom band is subtracting it, just like we did in class. So we get this band. So whenever statistically it touches the top band, it can't go above that. Statistically, it should turn around and go lower. So some people technically will buy stock between these two bands. So here it touches the top band. You sell the stock because it's heading lower. It touches the lower band. You buy it until it touches the top band. Um, and you, you wait for it until it's to separate. So you would buy. Again, down here, sell, uh, buy. You can sell up here at the top band, sell down here at the bottom band. Um, see, here it's tricky, though, because if you would have sold here, you do miss sort of this run-up. <coughs> but if you believe a little bit more in statistics and standard deviation, these Bollinger Bands could sort of put the stock in a framework that statistically, whenever it touches the top band, it should move and gravitate more towards the lower band at some point because it's statistically already reached the top price it can. So Bollinger Bands is, is one of the expressions of statistics in technical analysis that you could utilize. And you know, I suggest you know, technical analysis is a lot deeper than, than the one chapter we covered in class, that you may want to look at some of these other indicators 
such as uh, exponential moving average, money flow, uh, and um, some stochastic. There are um, other indicators in here that you could look at. And you could really build a chart um, with a lot of uh, other indicators and custom, customization that you want when you're doing your analysis. And sort of like I showed you, you build the chart, <coughs> and then you could go in and just add another stock symbol to flip to your next stock or look at a few different stocks. All right. The, I want to go back to the lecture from the other day for a minute. There's only two slides left in that lecture. I was able to get through at least one stock for, uh, um, that everyone's working on. But I just want to sum up technical analysis very quickly. So um, some conclusions about technical analysis now that I exposed you to the basics of it and talked about, okay. So through the test of technical analysis, you know, there are many people who have actually tested and done research on technical analysis and they have actually failed uh, to confirm the value of technical analysis. <coughs> So even though a lot of peop most people uh, utilize it and many traders work with it, uh, academics have, been have failed to really prove its usefulness uh, compared to other strategies of investing. So a lot of the science out there, the majority of it doesn't support that technical analysis works. And that's what's really held back many academics from ever talking about it, writing about it, or um, supporting it is because most of the academic, the academic testing research on it has really failed to prove it as um, a usable analysis scheme. However, you talk to traders and the majority of people who trade with technical analysis, whether they're institutional traders or individual traders, a majority of them swear that that's where m most of their returns have come from and most of their money that they've made has been through technical analysis, not fundamental. <coughs> now, there has been some strong evidence that you know, stock price changes are more in line of the, a, a weak form of efficiency, meaning that you can't the weak form of efficiency says you can't use past stock prices or patterns to predict future stock prices. Stock prices. So in a weak efficient market, it says that, yes, inside information and fundamental information is useful, but technical information does, is not useful in predicting the future of the stock market. Um, although it's really impossible to detect to test all the technical aspects of an, a technical analysis, since there's so many indicators and so many things to look at, uh, it's really difficult to uh, test all of them simultaneously. But investors today, it remains a very popular investment tool. If you look on Amazon or in the bookstore, there are many books written on technical analysis and many very famous analysts and investors who said, who said you know, through a lifetime of using technical analysis, they've made significant, much more significant returns than fundamental analysis. So that's why it's still alive today, is even though it can't be proven, it, it's, it also hasn't necessarily been unproven. And when you have a lot of experts um, talking about how successful they were with technical analysis, it's hard for it to really disappear. And there's even, um, you can even earn, I think, a certificate in technical analysis trading. There are institutions and there are organizations that do support the learning and the use of this on, in, in an investing scale. Okay, so that's part two. 
Now, 